All right, folks, welcome to the next video. So this is your six C notes. That's six C as in cupcake. Okay, the Roman Republic. So last time we talked about um, kind of the geography of Rome, mythology, a little background information. Now today we're going to get into, like, what did the government look like? What did kind of people actually do in Rome? So that type of stuff. Okay, so this map here we see, okay, obviously Rome right here located centrally in Italy, okay, right on the Mediterranean Sea. So at this point, Rome had really developed um, significantly between 270 and 100 BCE. They would end up controlling a huge chunk of territory, and it's only going to get bigger. But what does republic mean? So what does the word republic mean? A republic is a form of government in which power rests with citizens who have the right to vote for their leaders. Okay, so the key here is that citizens have the right to vote for their leaders. Okay, so a republic, very similar, this Roman Republic is very similar to what is the United States government, which is also a republic. So, okay, the power is in the hands of the citizens, they vote for their leaders, and then their leaders kind of make decisions for them. Okay, so republic, very similar to democracy, but kind of the difference is in, instead of citizens voting on everything, they just vote to elect their leaders. Okay. So, the social structure in Rome. All right. Patricians. These are the powerful nobility. Okay. These are the wealthy individuals that kind of control society. So the word nobility means wealthy, powerful families who make up the upper class of society. Okay. So if you see this word nobility, we're going to see it over and over and over again. Okay, it means kind of these powerful families who kind of make up the upper part of society. So these patricians usually are like big landowners, or they might be like wealthy traders, or they might be kind of um, wealthy government officials. But these guys are going to be few in number, and they're going to be powerful. All right, now the plebeians. You might hear plebeians. You might hear just uh, the word pleb. Okay, whenever you're insulting someone, you might see the word, you might see someone say, oh, that's just a pleb, or something along those lines, because these are kind of the lower class of society. So this makes up the majority of the population. Typically, these are just common farmers. Okay, so the key here is that Rome is kind of a farming society, at least early on in its kind of life. Ancient Rome was made up of a ton of these kind of lower class plebs, these low class plebeians, who are basically common farmers. Okay, and then the last part, the lowest, uh, you know, part of the totem pole is the slaves. Okay, not based on race, so anybody could be a slave. If you owed somebody money, if you just lost a battle and, you know, let's face it, they still wanted to use you, they could use you as slaves. So slavery is absolutely rampant in Roman society, and it's actually one of the big reasons uh, that um, you know, the Republic ends up having problems, which we're going to talk about next unit. Okay, so patricians, plebs, and slaves. Those are the three kind of key things we need to know. So here we go with our patrician. He might look like kind of what you would imagine a Roman would look like based on like movies or TV shows or something. Okay, we see kind of the dress here. Obviously, it'd be more colorful. Um, he's kind of got the nice shoes. He looks like he's kind of ready to run the government. Okay, our plebeians kind of going to be poor farmers, and then our slaves, of course, not going to be well dressed, and they're going to be kind of forced to do whatever the patricians or kind of the upper class tells them to do. So, patrician men and plebeian men had the rights as citizens. Okay, so even selective foreigners do have rights as citizens. But the what does being a citizen mean? Okay, so citizenship in ancient Rome basically means okay. You have to pay taxes, okay, so a, a tax is basically anything, okay, the government makes citizens pay money so that the government can provide services, okay, so in America, we pay money to the government, everyone who has a job pays taxes, and then in turn, the government builds roads, okay, they make government buildings, they provide education, okay, they do kind of these infrastructure things that allow us to live better lives, or at least 
That's what they tell us the taxes are for. Okay, so the taxes go into paying the military. They go into building roads, all these things. So the Roman society, uh, the tax is very key. Okay. Military service. You have to serve in the military. Any person who owns land has to take part in the military. Okay, so this military is broken up into legions. Okay, so the Roman legions are units of about 5,000 men. They're highly disciplined and trained, and they're key to the Roman success. Okay, so the Roman legion is kind of the unit of the military. So remember in ancient Greece, it was called the phalanx, kind of that blocky formation where they kind of move as a unit. In this, it's, they're kind of taking the best parts of that, but they're also allowing for more individual success. So they take the idea of the phalanx, they spread it out a little bit, and they kind of move as a unit, but they fight as individuals. So, how did the government work? Okay, it was a representative democracy. Okay, so power rests with the citizens who have the right to vote for their leaders. Okay, so we've been over this. The citizens would vote in their leaders, and then the leaders would make the decisions. Okay, so these uh, basically leaders would get together in what's called assemblies. Okay, so the first assembly, assembly means a meeting of people. Okay, assembly, okay, meeting of people. All right. And basically the first type of meeting would be the Senate. Okay, so the Senate, they're going to be members for life and they're chosen from the patricians. Okay, and they're going to control foreign uh, policy, financial policy. All right, so the Senate is kind of like the richer folks. They elect the Senate, and the Senate has most of the power in the Roman Republic. So the wealthy patricians, they would vote in the Senate, and they would elect leaders who would make their decisions for them. So the Senate would get together, they'd debate, et cetera, et cetera, and then they make decisions. Okay, Centurion Assembly. Any citizen soldier um, can be a member for life, and these people would select consuls, okay, who make the laws. Okay, so the consuls um, and the Centurion Assembly, they get together to make these laws. Tribal Assembly, kind of uh, a plebeian assembly that elects tribunes. Okay, so this is more on like the common level. Okay, more more people can be involved in this because plebeians are more plentiful than the patricians. Okay, so kind of an order of power structure, it would kind of go like this, right? So the Senate would be at the top. This is kind of the most powerful assembly. And then the tribal assembly would be kind of the lowest. So this is kind of what the, the Roman Senate would look like. Okay, so these are all like the wealthy patricians who would elect these senators, and they would all kind of sit in these chairs, and they would debate things. Okay, typically the consul, he's like the head, kind of like the president. He would sit up here, and then they would kind of debate these things and kind of yell at each other for a little while and then make decisions. So, what were these elected offices that we talk about? Okay, so, first one is a consul. Okay, so this is kind of like the president. Okay, very similar to the functions that the president of the United States does even today. So, the consuls are going to be chief executives, so that means president basically and commanders of an army okay two of them are at a time so the key thing we need to know is that there's two consuls okay the Romans were very fearful of putting too much power into the hands of one person so two consuls they elected they're elected for one year terms and they basically are commanders of an army and kind of oversee the government tribunes okay they're elected by plebeians to protect plebeian rights from the unfair act of the patricians so these consuls kind of got powerful, the Senate got powerful, and then the plebeians kind of said, hey, we need some, we need some representation too. So the tribunes are kind of like the consuls of the plebs. And then occasionally dictators would be elected in times of crisis to serve a six-month term. We saw the same thing in ancient Greece. So sometimes if you have huge problems, huge issues in society, then you need just the voice of one person to kind of, that you trust to kind of get out of the crisis. So that's, that's why they would elect these dictators. And then praetors would be kind of elected judges. So the laws of Rome are going to be known as the Twelve Tables. Okay, and these establish the idea that all citizens have the right to protection under the law. Okay, so this might be something like what the Twelve Tables looked like back in Rome. Alright, so the key here is that 
these laws of Rome were kind of codified and put together, you know, on paper, on stone, you know, put out for all to see so that all know kind of the laws. This is something we've seen with Hammurabi. Okay, we've seen it with Persia. We've seen it with the Edicts of Ashoka. So it seems like these, you know, good uh, or powerful civilizations, one of the things they have in common is that they have these laws that kind of everyone knows. All right, so that's your six C notes. Um, thanks for listening. And Mr. Nolan, have smelly feet. I decide that the things that I tried were in my life just to get high on. When I sit.